Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Natalie with Natalie's Closet. And today we are doing how to episode one, making a row counter. I will be right back. Natalie's Closet. Okay, so welcome back everyone. As I said, this is Natalie with Natalie's Closet. And today we are doing how to episode one, making a row counter so how to make a row counter and that is what i've decided to name the series on anything that i do as far as you know stitch workups or whatever the case is i am using a i have not gotten a new boom i am using a rather um interesting setup here it was something that i got at home goods and yeah, we're going to see how it works because I hope it doesn't fall off of, unclip off of my desk. Um, I think I need to readjust. I apologize if I, like, if it shakes and stuff because this isn't the most secure thing, but um, it is what it is. For sake of the subscriber of the week, which is where you guys check to see what day, what piece of jewelry changes, today, since this is Monday and you're only seeing my hands, which I do have the two bracelets and my octopus ring, let's just say today is not the day the jewelry would have changed, okay? So that should just be fair for everybody since you're not actually seeing my face to see. Actually, I'm not even wearing an earring, so, <laughs> so but that is that doesn't count. For today okay so today is not the day jewelry will change so that should make it easy there will only be two other videos for that to be for that to happen all right so first thing I want to say is like two weeks ago maybe it was already three weeks ago somebody commented in one of my videos asking if I would be willing to um, make something for them then i asked them to email me they emailed me i responded and for the life of me i cannot find any of the emails your email to me my email to you just can't find it so if you can i'm going to look back through the comments as well but if you can please if you happen to be watching this video and that's why i'm saying it in the beginning um could you please email me again because i have all the stuff i was actually going to email you about a week ago letting you know i have i have everything that i need i was going to let you know what we talked about and i can't find the emails and it's driving me up a wall because i've gone through every single email and i get a lot of emails so if you can email me again i would greatly appreciate it i did not forget i have the stuff um so okay that's business taken care of. So now as to row counters, I learned how to make my row counter, which is this one right here by watching Ryan with the yarn hag Ryan's tutorial. And I'm basically going to be going after her, you know, going over, going, I'm basically going to be doing her tutorial, but with my spin on it, I haven't learned anything different from having watched hers. So until I do, this is the way I'm going to be making my row counters. However, today we are going to be doing something a little bit, we're going to be using different beads and I will go over that. So this is the row counter I made originally and I made it so that it can accommodate a large project. I've got 20 large beads and then the 10 smaller beads. So once at like here, I'm at row, th I'm at, this is 30 right here and this is seven. So I'm starting row 27, I mean 37 right now. So this particular um, row counter can accommodate a project of 200 rows. Obviously, if I need to go over 200 rows, I can start again because clearly if I pull these down and I pull these up, I'm not starting at row one. I would be starting at 201. Does that make sense? So that's if I needed to go with a project larger than 200 rows. Now this one is the one that Ryan included in our yarn swap box. I absolutely love these beads. Why? I'm sure you guys can all guess because they're all neon. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now these are all smaller beads. Um, and I actually never even counted to see, I, I don't know, there's probably like 30 or 40 beads on here. So that would be a project for about, you know, 40, well, however many beads there are, that's how big this project would be. Now, I did forget to get a clasp again, um, so I'm using a carabiner that I had on something else, um, so that I'm just going to use that for this particular project, or for this particular tutorial. So, 
mine is going to be a little bit different in that I am going to do the start of it with you and then I'm going to finish it. There's only going to be 20 beads on this particular one because that's all the beads I have in this particular set of beads. Um, so that would be for a smaller project and we do have smaller projects so that's not a big deal. Now as far as the, uh, the cord, Ryan in her video she said that you want to use, she tried using um, yarn, she tried using a couple other things and after wearing them for a couple weeks and washing her hands all the time because she did it as a bracelet, it started to fray. So she was, she said that natural cording is going to be the best cord to use. Now I want to, I want to start using, you all know I love bling, right? So I want to start using like beads like these or even smaller beads if need, well, maybe not smaller beads, but I want to use beads that have smaller holes than these. These have fairly large holes if you can see that. Um as well as these, they have larger holes. So I want to, so I would need to use smaller cording or cord. Now, when I was at Michael's getting this stuff, I called Ryan and I was like, Ryan, there's so many different options of cords, which one do I use? And she said, natural cording, but make sure that it is waxed, which I did. This particular cord is waxed, okay? She said that will help prevent it from fraying as you're using the beads and moving them up and down. Now I did notice that this cord is actually a lot thicker than mine. Can you see that? This is mine and this is what she used. Mine is actually a lot thinner. And I did notice, okay, now that I have it all, all tangled up, that one of the beads that I recently bought, um, a set of beads from Michaels, the holes will actually accommodate this particular cord. So that's what we're going to do as far as starting uh, starting me showing you the row counter. So you do want to, you know, if you do you with using the cord, you want to use one that's waxed. Now she did tell me that if I wanted to use smaller beads, I could use like um the like bracelet, I think she said the bracelet thread or, you know, something like that. Well, when I was at Michaels, they have had very few employees to help customers and the employee I found had no idea what I was talking about and they couldn't find somebody that did know what I was talking about. So I was like, okay, whatever, I'll come back or I'll do my research online. So to go with the smaller beads, I will likely switch to something smaller than this so I can actually get to even smaller be smaller holes than this bead. Now, that being said, we're going to go ahead and start, I'm going to go ahead and start and show you how to start it and start making the row counter. Then I'm going to go ahead and get off camera, finish the row counter, and then come back and show you it complete with the 20 beads that I have, because I don't want to have to sit here and bore you to death while doing that. All right. So like I said, you want to make sure that you have your cord. And this one is wax. Now I have already cut a piece off. You want to make it fairly long. You know, you want to make sure that it's going to accommodate the amount of beads that you're wanting to do. This is actually going to be longer than I even need it. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to get the cord, that other one out of view. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and cut it and double it. Okay, so you're just going to fold it. You see how I have it folded? You're going to fold it to an end and have these two ends loose over here, okay? Then you're gonna attach it to whatever clasp it is you're gonna use. Now, my other one, I didn't have a clasp, I didn't have a clasp at all, so I used a Yarn Hag Ryan um, <laughs> keychain, which of course with a keychain, you can't put it on and off of the handle of your bag. So I have to redo that. But like I said, I have this carabiner that um, I was on something else and I'm just going to use that. So all you're going to do is you're going to feed the other side onto here. Okay. So you just, you just basically just took it and fed these two strands through the loop and you tightened it. If you, you could put on slow mode, if you need to see it again, I'm going to go ahead and put it on the end here. All right. So now you're going to take your cord. Now I'm hoping all of this is showing because 
it's hard for me to see my I'm not actually doing this through the viewfinder I'm just basically checking every so often to make sure everything's in view so you went ahead and you separated your two cords all right and you've got this up here now I love how she said that what you want to do or what you want to try and do with mine with the large beads and the small beads I know which side I started on because I basically move them both to the middle like this so I know that when I pull down over here that I'm starting here and this is where oops I'm not on camera the, this is where I'm starting and this is where I'm this is my end bead because I also have these beads over here right but when you don't have it like that you want to have a stop and start bead something different it, whether it's a red bead for stop that's where you that's the end of your uh, row counter or green where you start or whichever way you want to do it but so that you know which side is where you started because if you have all you have all these beads right let's pull some down and you're like halfway up with this you can actually pull like almost three or four down it's tough but so let's say okay that's almost in half all right so let's say you have this bead, this row counter right and you don't have a start or stop bead you're you could if you don't remember if you started on the side that had this or if you started on the end you're going to be like wait a minute am i on row 20 or am i on row 35 because this side is longer you know so if you have a red bead or a green bead like this one has the green bead i would know that i started on this side and this is how far along i am on the project versus it being on the longer side i hope that makes sense i think ryan actually explained that a little bit better but i'm going to start with a completely different bead and i'm going to put it up here and that's going to be my stop bead so i'm going to know anytime i look at my row counter that whatever the beads are on the bottom here is where i started and that's how many rows i've done i'm doing something totally different and i'm going to use this little guy right here i'm hoping it's is it zooming in yeah okay so i'm going to use this little guy here as my stop bead now what you're going to want to do is start from the left go left to right all right so you're going to go put this really cord in on this side i pull it down and then i take this side and i go right to left the reason why i pull it down like that is because you don't want the the cords to uh i don't know if it's zooming in okay now i think it is you don't want the cords to twist inside the hole okay because that's going to make it really hard for you to actually move them up and down so then all you do is you pull it okay so now we've got this bead up here and this is our stop bead so we're going to know when that this is the side that is the end of the row counter so we'll know that the bottom over here is where we've started our rows it'll make more sense once i actually get more beads on here so that's our end bead and then you just pull it all the way to the top like i did all right and it moves because it's not i didn't twist the uh cord inside the hole all right so now we're going to take the next bead we're going to go from left to right i pull down if you guys don't want to pull down and uh, focus sorry guys i don't know why it's not wanting to focus left to right and then you're going to take the the right side and go right to left now if you are using smaller beads and you're needing to um you know what i don't know that this will work as well as the other beads we're gonna we're gonna test it out all right because they're this way versus laying flat but um what was i saying i don't remember what i was saying um oh if you're using like a thread versus a cable uh the cable i mean the cord you may want to use a needle to help thread it through okay so this is all you do you just do this with every bead as many beads as you want to do on here okay i'm going to do a few more with you 
Take your next bead, go left, go with the left cord, go left to right, I pull down. Take the right cord, go right to left. So that you're not twisting it inside, that's why I pull it down. And then you go ahead and you kind of tighten it. And you make sure that they're kind of lined up, all right? Let's do two more together. And I hope I'm not like either confusing you or whatever. This is my very first tutorial, so I hope you guys will um, give me a little bit of slack. So left to right, take your right cord. You know what? It's it's starting to kind of fray where it's cut. All right, so then right to left, pull it through, and they're all lining up nicely. You see that? Now I am color coordinating this just because that's just who I am. So left to right, right, oops, really? Right to left, and pull it through. I'm surprised these are wanting that, that they're wanting, that they're actually standing up on the, on the, on the desk, but, uh, versus laying down. So I probably would have wanted to start with a different bead that didn't go the same, like that laid flat like that, but that's all right. And like I said, this is just something I'm doing for purposes of showing you what to do. This isn't one that I would probably list on Etsy or sell, uh, because I would want it to be, I, I'd like it to be a little bit more coordinated, but I was wanting to make an obvious different stop point. Uh, I'm not going to use like a green or a, a different start um, bead because this to me is totally obvious on the fact that that's where my stop bead is. But you guys can do whatever you guys want. So now I'll do a couple more and then actually I think I'm not even going to go off camera and finish it because like I said I want to do a different um, stop bead. I, I was about to pick up the bead um, versus the cable. And then right to left, pull it, make sure they kind of line up and I think that looks good. Yep. So we're going to do one more and then I'm going to go ahead and show you how to end it. So the left cord, left to right, I pull down so that I'm not twisting the cords inside the bead. Then I go right to left and pull it tight. And make sure that they're all kind of lined up. Now they're wanting to lay down because it's getting heavier. So this is your row counter for all intents and purposes. So this is what you do. You just continue doing it until you've used, you've put on as many beads as you want. Do you want to put 50 beads and have it really, really long? You, go ahead. That's, that's great. Do you know that your project, oh, I just bit my lip. Um, do you know that your project is going to be like a hundred uh, rows? Maybe you want to do 10 larger beads like I have here, except I have 20, 10 larger beads and then do the smaller beads over here. And then, you know, after you do 10 here, you, you pull this one up. Okay, now you're at 10. You start here, you go, all right, now I'm at 11. Does that make sense? So now in order to end this, now that we know that these are all nice and tight, you're gonna wanna give yourself a little bit of room in order to be able to pull down your bead, right? So I like to give myself a little bit of room. I didn't, I didn't do quite as long as I would have if, honestly, I don't know why I didn't. Because he, this is the space I have from the rest of the large ones. This is between here and then I have a little bit here towards the end. But I think this is a good amount of space to have to be able to um, pull your bead down. So all you do is just go ahead and knot it. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not used to doing it. You know I don't do tutorials typically. So, um, And then you go ahead and just tighten that knot up. And then there you have your row counter. Ta-da! So 
all you do is you, I, how I've been doing it is when I start my row, not when I end it, when I, okay, I'm starting my first row, I pull down one. And then, all right, I'm done with one, I'm going to two. So I know when I come back to my project, if I put it down for any reason, when I come back to my project, I know, okay, I'm working on row two. Not that I'm at the end of row two and do I have to go to row three? No. I know that I am currently working on row two, wherever I started, whether I just started the first stitch on row two and had to put it down or I'm halfway down the row, I know that that's row two. You guys can decide however it is that you want to determine when you moved your beads for yourself. So I hope... This was a semi-decent <laughs> tutorial. It is my first one, so please bear with me and hopefully give me a little bit of slack on it. But um, if you have any questions, let me know. Or if you want to maybe see a master do it, um, go ahead and look at Ryan's. I'll put the link to her tutorial down below. Uh, but if you see... Now this one, okay, if you see I'm like moving it around I'm doing whatever I'm da, 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 right I'm just going crazy with it these slightly moved but it these two oops these slight this one was like that it slightly moved there but I know that it didn't these two didn't get anywhere near close to each other and then this these didn't move at all either so they're pretty tight I do think that because I went with the pretty significantly different size beads Sometimes I wonder if there's a little bit more slack in it, but it really, for the most part, and I have it at the bottom of my um, my bag because, like I said, this doesn't snap on to anything. Uh, so I have it at the bottom of my project bag, and I'll pull it out, and sometimes it'll be maybe like that or, you know, something like that. But otherwise, for the most part, it's pretty dead on where it's supposed to be. This one... It doesn't look like there's any, there's no, okay, this one came down a little bit, but there is no wiggle room on that. It's, it is stationary and where it is, I left it. I hope it's zoomed in. If this video is like all crazy wonky and everything else, I will redo it, but I'm hoping it came out okay this first, this would be my first, my first take on my first <laughs> tutorial and I probably just made you crazy with everything all my talking but anyway if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below if you enjoyed this tutorial and you actually got something out of it let me know I would love to see pictures of your row counters when you make them uh, feel free to join my Facebook group it's I'll put it right here on the bottom of the screen but it's Natalie's with an apostrophe s Natalie's closet fiber arts community the link is in the description box below as well um, I'd love it if you'd share the pictures of the row counters that you've made. That would be awesome. Uh, also, if you are new and you happen to still be watching this tutorial, I would appreciate it if you'd hit the subscribe button down below as well as notification bell next to that. Make sure you hit it to all so you're notified anytime I upload videos. If you'd be willing to give this video a thumbs up, that would be very much appreciated. And sharing it would be awesome as well, you know. I, w I want to be able to get more used to m doing tutorials, and this is definitely going to be a way to get your feedback on how this one went. But I am going to probably make a bunch of different types of row counters once I get the right cord, like using these beads, well, the large ones anyway, this large one right there. So I may have to get a couple more bracelets because there's only, I think, like 10 or 11 of those large ones on here. I may make a row counter out of these beads. Bling, bling. You all know that's me. Um, and a bunch of other different beads that I may have. I'm going to try to go crazy with it, make a bunch of different row counters. One to accommodate large projects, smaller projects, whatever the case may be. And as well as uh, upload or update, I should say, my Etsy page with some of my stitch markers. Uh, so I'm going to be doing that in the next couple weeks. I'm going to be updating it more and more as I make more and more. And I, of course, will share with you any of these things that I make um, on one of my regular videos. So again, let me know what you thought. 
is this fairly easy? I thought it was fairly easy. This, this is like, I think this is incredibly easy. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys make your own and, and share it with me on my Facebook group. And yeah, so have a great day. You guys will see, well, I will, I will read you tomorrow and you guys will see me tomorrow night with Miley. And uh, then of course on Wednesday, I'm hoping to have some progress on some whips. So yay for that. So have a great day. Stay safe and healthy. Love, hugs, and prayers to you guys. Remember, for every season, there's a reason to crochet. Miley says hi to her peeps. And that's supposed to be a wave. I'm not sure which way I should do it, but she says hi to her peeps. And uh, my mom says hello to everybody who has been wishing her um, or sending her prayers and hellos and stuff. So have a great day. Again, stay safe and healthy. Extra prayers to anybody that needs them. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day. Bye. I am so sorry. I know I'm adding this on at the end of the video and I sincerely apologize, but I completely forgot to mention who the subscriber of the week is and I I feel so badly about that, but our newest subscriber of the week is... Congratulations, Froggy Win a Knitting. I am so excited for you. Please email me at uh, my email address with your mailing address so I could go ahead and get your card and stickers out. Uh, I'll put it right here. It's Nat here, right here. It's Natalie's dot closet at yahoo.com. The link is in the description box below, but congratulations again. I am so excited for you and I'm so sorry that I made you wait until the very end to hear who it was. Um, I actually edited my videos, had them ready to post. And I, was, I mean, that videos, I meant my video, had it ready, edited, everything was ready to upload it. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I forgot, and I didn't want to just do a community post, so please forgive me, but I am really excited. Congratulations. Email me your mailing address, and I will get that out to you. Um, okay, guys, I for sure, okay, now I'm for sure done. I will see you guys tomorrow, or you guys will see me tomorrow. Have a great day. Remember, for every season, there's a reason to crochet. Miley says bye to her peeps. Love, hugs, and prayers, and uh, I will see you guys soon. Bye.